What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we just got the announcement of some brand new cards coming out in the TCG. But fun fact, they're actually not new. These are cards that were released either in the anime or in the manga that are finally coming here in the TCG. These cards were originally introduced to us way back when and we're finally getting them today. So I'm super excited. There's support for Blackwing, Crystal Beast, Hero, DDD, a lot of anime favorite decks. So that's really cool. If you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on Spanko deck profiles combo videos dual replays here and there we do these discussions like we're doing today so I'm really excited I hope you guys enjoy and with that let's get right into the video okay so we're here on YGO organization to take a look at these anime cards that were just released or just announced and we finally have official text for these cards and I really want to get through some of them particularly I want to discuss three of them because three of them are just absolutely crazy that we're getting them here in the TCG so let's get right into it I'm gonna skip over a few like you guys are gonna see the praying mantis I'm gonna skip over these this is the first one that I want to talk about but first I think my face cam is actually covering the text so what I'll do here real quick is I'm just gonna move my face cam over here so you guys can see all right so the first card we're going to be talking about is golden rule this is one of the most broken cards in the Yu-Gi-Oh GX anime Jesse uses this of course in crystal beast and the craziest thing about this card is that the first line of text literally says this card is always treated as a crystal card that's insane not even rainbow bridge of the heart counts as a crystal card so this is just crazy because it becomes searchable off of so many cards in that deck that deck is already super super consistent right but then on top of that the actual effects of this card are insane it reads that you can only activate one card with this card's name per turn aka it's a hard ones per turn you can place two crystal beast monsters from your deck face up in your spell and trap card zone as continuous spells then special summon a crystal beast monster from your hand or graveyard with a different name from those cards and if you do equip it with this card when this card leaves the field destroy that monster now why is this card insane okay first of all it's specifically insane in the overdrive turbo or the combo builds of crystal beast and the reason for that is because in conclave control you're not playing that many names to begin with but in something like okay okay let me just say this we all know how ruby carbuncle works right if the card is special summoned you get to special summon the crystal beasts that are in your spell and trap card zone and this card what it's doing for you is it's letting you put two crystal beast monsters into your spell and trap card zone and then after they're already put into the spell and trap card zone you get to special summon a crystal beast monster from your hand or graveyard now that means ruby carbuncle has to be already in your hand but you have to keep in mind that it could be in your graveyard you have to be keep in mind that the monster you special summon could also be something like a sapphire pegasus so there's just so many different names that you can use this with and it unbricks a lot of your hands especially in the overdrive turbo where you have to play seven different names this kind of helps you when you draw one of the names that you don't necessarily want to draw so this card is insane i think it's absolutely going to be a three of in the overdrive turbo decks and the fact that we're getting this another piece of just crystal beast consistency in the tcg is insane honestly big shout out to neshi because this guy has been manifesting crystal beast to the top for a long time and it looks like with the most recent structure deck he obviously came third place in uh, one of the most recent regionals that he went to so he's being super successful with that deck and i'm sure a lot of other people can be successful with the deck as well but even a card like this makes the overdrive turbo and the combo builds very very relevant so i'm absolutely excited about this card i think this card is insane i cannot wait to be playing crystal beast because honestly this card alone makes me really want to play that deck so i'm really excited i think this card is absolutely insane it has so many different implications and that's why i think this card is nuts now the next card i want to talk about protection of the elements so protection of the elements is actually not an anime card it's a manga card it's a card Jaden uses as essentially a spell or trap card negate and fun fact this is our first if you don't count chaos hero contrast this is our very first piece of negate in heroes that's crazy the fact that this card is coming to the TCG is really nuts now I'll be honest with you I'm gonna read the card effect first and I'll give you guys my opinion but the fact is this is the first kind of spell or trap negate that the deck has ever had which is really really nice it's a counter trap card so that's really cool as well it can't be responded to unless your opponent has like a judgment there's no more red reboot so it's just really solemn judgment essentially that can stop this the card reads when a spell or trap card is activated you can banish a face up elemental hero monster you control until the end phase negate the activation and if you do destroy that card all right so let's get into this first effect here real quick if you've ever played heroes you kind of can see the synergy with this card with a card like elemental hero absolute zero absolute zero reads that if it just leaves the field by any means if it leaves the field it destroys all monsters your opponent controls so the synergy between this and ab zero is really really powerful the problem with this is it's really a hard card to search in the deck unless i think you're specifically playing spirit of neos so you 
you have to kind of adjust the deck to be able to search this card. Also, you want to have to go first with the deck. And yes, the deck can still go first with cards like Plasma, with cards like Dark Law that are still really relevant in any format, essentially, right? But now you're really forcing yourself to be ending on an Elemental Hero Fusion card. Keep in mind, this card specifically says that it has to be a face-up Elemental Hero card you control, not just any hero. If it had said any hero, I feel like there would be a little bit of a discussion to actually be playing this because you could banish your, let's say, Dark Law that's about to get removed, right? Let's say your opponent has Regeki, because right, we all know how Regeki kind of breaks all the boards because we don't have Spell and Trap card hate, right? So if your opponent goes Regeki, you can just use this on your Dark Law or your Plasma or any hero monster you have on the board, even some of your Link monsters that count as hero monsters, of course, as well. That would make this card a lot better. The problem is this specifically has to be an elemental hero. Now, yes, again, Ab Zero is an insane synergy with this card, but there's no other real cards that are going to benefit you from banishing them, especially if you're just going to be able to get OTK after that. Keep in mind, this is not even an Omni negate. It's a single spell or trap negate. So that's why this card kind of looks cool on the surface, but it actually does have a lot of inherent flaws. Now, the second effect says that if you control an elemental hero Terra Firma, and this has been confirmed now, you can banish this card from your graveyard, special summon one of your elemental hero monsters that is banished or in your hand or in your graveyard, ignoring its summoning condition. So that's kind of cool as well. But the problem is, again, people are not going to be playing Terra Firma just to get the second effect off. So it's a really cool card. It's I mean, it's a manga card. That's really what it is at the end of the day. But it's not really a card I think that's going to see play in a lot of hero builds. Unlike this card, Golden Rule, which is absolutely insane in Overdrive Turbo. I think this is definitely a three of in that deck. This card, I feel like people are just not going to play. Again, it's barely searchable. You can search it with Spirit of Neos, but then now you have to play the entire Neos package. On top of that, even when you do search it, if you're not ending on Absolute Zero, you're not really getting that much benefit out of it. So that's why I kind of think this card is not going to see that much play. However, I will say it's always cool seeing hero support. And the last one I wanted to talk about, there's a lot more here, by the way. All right. There's a lot more. The DDD one's kind of cool as well. But the last one I really want to talk about and focus on is Blackwing. The reason I want to focus on these three specifically is because I feel like they're the three most important ones that are coming out of this. These other cards that are coming out are not really going to see that much play. And if you guys want to see them again, I'll leave a link to this website, YG Organization, in the description below so you guys can read the cards fully and then formulate your own opinion and then see the rest of the cards on this list. However, I do want to talk about the black one over here. Maybe I'm wrong, but I can't remember if this is an anime card or a manga card. So you guys remind me in the comment section because I honestly can't remember. But it's a really cool card because, first of all, it's a level two tuner, which is insane in a lot of Blackwing decks. We all know how Vada is basically a three of in that deck. So having access to a level two tuner is really, really powerful. Now, Vada, of course, has some really cool effects, but having a level two tuner is really, really nice. Helps you get into your eights, helps you get into your tens and your sixes as well, which is always really, really powerful. So this card reads that you can only special summon with the first effect of this card name once per Okay, essentially, it's a once per turn. It's a hard once per turn. The way the OCG translated it is a little bit different, but essentially in the TCG, it's just going to say you can only activate the first effect once per turn, right? That's that's pretty much what it is, okay? So it's a hard once per turn, and then you can only use the second effect once per duel. So keep that in mind. So the first effect is a once per turn, the second effect is a once per duel. So the first effect here says if there is a monster with 2,000 or more attack on the field. Now this is really cool because it counts either side of the field. If there's 2,000 or more on either side, you can special summon this card from your hand. Now I will say this though, a lot of the Blackwing monsters are known for being able to just special summon themselves if you have another Blackwing on the board. This one unfortunately doesn't do that. It's a little bit more tougher. Now again, it's not that difficult because in Blackwing, you're going to be making synchro monsters and all the main synchro monsters you're going to be going into are more than 2000 attack. So for that reason, it's not that big of an issue. It's still going to be really easy to summon and it gives you that access where if you're going second, you can special summon this for free just because your opponent is most likely going to have a monster with more than 2000 attack. And then if you control a Blackwing synchro monster, quick effect, and this is really cool. You can banish this card from your graveyard, target one face up card your opponent controls, destroy it. So now what this card is really doing for you is it's giving you another form of disruption on top of the boards that you're already making. If you guys didn't watch my Blackwing video, you guys can see that in Blackwing, you can end on four or five disruption boards pretty easily. Now having this card in your graveyard just means you get a free disruption on your opponent's turn because at the end of the day, you're always pretty much going to have a Blackwing synchro monster on the board. On top of that, full armor master is the one that people like to go to. And when you have a towers on your side of the field, plus now you're going to have a card that's going to be a quick effect pop on your opponent's turn is going to be very, very powerful. Of course, you can also do it on your turn. This is really cool because if you are forced to go second, again, remember how I said that this effect can activate when you are going second, if your opponent has a monster with 2000 more attack, this is really cool because it doesn't say that you can't use it the turn it's sent to the graveyard. You can use this the same turn that it's sent to the graveyard, which is really cool because you can just start off your turn going second using this card, synchro summoning, activating this to pop a card your opponent controls. So now it's a form of disruption when you're going first, but going second, now it's kind of like a board breaker for you. So I think this card is really cool. I think it may be a one of in the deck. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think you're going to be playing three of this, but this card has a lot of potential. It's a level two tuner that special summons itself and it's a form
form of disruption for you and or board breaker. So I think this card is pretty cool. Again, I think it's a one of that Blackwing is definitely going to be playing. But again, this is the main card that I want to talk about because this card here, I think is game changing for Crystal Beast. This card, again, protection of the elements is not going to see that much play, unfortunately. I wish it didn't specify Elemental Hero Terra Firma, or honestly, I wish it just didn't specify Elemental Hero at all, because if it just said Hero, not Elemental Hero, it would be actually a really great card, right? But because it says Elemental Hero, it is kind of tough. And then this card, I think, is also really cool. Also, I really like the Blackwing. I've always liked Blackwing art, so I really like the artwork on this one. So I'm excited. Now, if you guys want to see, there is a lot more cards here, but uh, you guys can go through that. Again, a link will be in the description. I'm really excited for these, especially Golden Rule. I definitely think I'm going to be playing Crystal Beast when this card comes out. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Here we talked mostly and specifically about the Crystal Beast support, the Hero support, and the Blackwing support, just because I think those are the three most relevant cards. But again, if you guys want to read the whole entire spoiler list, you guys can see the description below. I'll leave a link there for you guys to check it out. Thank you guys all for watching. I do appreciate every single one of you. If you guys haven't already, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 8,000 subscribers. And honestly, I upload five days a week. So hopefully you guys can stay tuned for all that cool content that's going to be coming out so thank you guys all for watching i really do appreciate every single one of you just before we sign off here if you guys have any opinions or anything you guys would like to add on to what i talked about in today's video let me know in the comment section down below so this way we can all get multiple perspectives again that's how we grow here on the channel we grow together we become better together so thank you guys all for watching and with that Svenko signing out peace